Hello, thanks for joining me. My name is Cheryl Whitelaw and joining my session for the Edmonton Resilience Festival on learning to fall well. So I would, I'm relating falling to resistance by looking at not fall prevention, uh, but more as harm reduction. So being resilient in the sense that I know how to fall and get back up again and an ability to, to keep going. And so when we fall, what, what do we do? When we, there's not time when we fall to make a plan. And so we tend to do a reflex. And often we brace in some sort of way. So some kind of throwing our head back, throwing our arms back, trying to find stability in, in the twinkling of an eye. And so, you know, checking with people how many of you have had a fall in the last 12 months or had an un unwanted outcome from that fall, if, if that's been true for you, then you're much more likely to have this kind of bracing reflex in response to a fall. And so this is definitely a workshop for you. Uh, a little bit about myself, I am um, part of a Feldenkrais practitioner program. So I'm just a little over two years into a four year program. And I was authorized by the Guild last fall to be awareness through movement uh, instructor. I'm also an Aikido enthusiast. So this is me here in my, in my gi with my sword, but I fall for fun. So this is an area that I, I've spent, you know, six years of my life pursuing as a pastime and can bring some real world experience about, about falling in different conditions. I work as a somatic coach, so I support people um, to use their bodies as instrument of change, but also to help them with the quality of their movement. And you can check out more about me at my website, uh, kindpower.ca. So I'm gonna take you on what I call uh, learning expeditions uh, for this workshop. And so there's two ways to prepare for a fall. We can do movement to perform. So this approach would be uh, practicing a specific falling technique so that you know you'd be able to perform it well. But what we're gonna explore is movement to inform. Um, the Feldenkrais method um, is a, a practical neuroplasticity uh, learning method that uses movement to help help with learning, to help see the change that's happened through learning. So we're going to use this movement to inform um, in little tastes today in, in the workshop. And so we're going we're gonna to focus on a, a few things, a way to interrupt this bracing habit um, I, you know, checked into, there is a neurological research institute in Ontario that did a study recently looking at in midlife, what, where are people falling? What, what are issues with balance and with falling? And for midlife women, we tend to fall, I'll count me as one of them, we tend to fall when we're outside walking. And often um, that relates to injuries about wrists, broken wrists, um, other joints, but that's the most likely place to fall. If you're a midlife man, it's more likely to happen when you're doing some kind of vigorous activity, whether it's work outside, some kind of sporting activity. And so we're going to um, look at interrupting the kind of bracing habits that happen when we tend to fall and replace those bracing habits with better reflexes. And so this is where this movement to inform comes in. We're gonna inform your nervous system. And it's a way that, you know, when you fall, the part of your nervous system that has the reflexes, this takes over the, the decider part in your brain, in your prefrontal cortex. And so we're gonna target your reflexes directly with this. Um, I use a guided discovery approach. So I'm verbally guiding you to explore your movement. Uh, this workshop is based on a seven hour series, Learn to Fall Well, that, that I have offered several times. So I call this the amuse-bouche taste uh, of this approach. 
If you are following along to this recording, please choose your own comfort. Um, the, the learning zone when we're doing movement for our nervous system happens when you're working in a state of ease, of comfort, and of curiosity. So if you notice that you hold your breath, if you notice that you're really going into effort to make it happen, just pause and come back to feel yourself in contact with the chair, the floor, and, and start the movement again and maybe go a little smaller. Make it, make it keep within the realm of what's possible and ideally with what's pleasant. And so with the two expeditions that we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, uh, talk about five points that'll help us re retool our reflexes from bracing to, to a softer, a lighter falling. So one is butt back, um, rather than head back, butt back, uh, a round shape, this, this sense of how can we round ourselves. Having a relationship with the floor where the floor is friendlier. We brace when we're, we're facing an unfriendly floor. And so we'll explore a bit how to make the floor friendlier. Um, looking a little bit at losing weight. So not, not in the sense of poundage, but in the sense of perceived effort so that you can do less work and so you literally can fall more lightly and then finding support while you're moving. So uh, let, let's get going with these expeditions. Um, for this first one, you're going to need a, a yoga mat and enough space on the ground that you could roll from one side to the other. And so you may want to pause the recording so you can set yourself up and then continue. And so just to start, when, now that you've got your space set up, just stand or, or walk a little around in your space and notice how far does the floor feel? Does it feel distant? Um, the sense that if I'm up here and the floor is down there, um, it can feel a little unfriendly. And so when we tend to feel afraid of falling, we're more likely to brace. So don't, don't change anything, just, just notice what your experience is of your sense of distance from the floor. And as you're standing or walking, just in your mind's eye, think about falling to the ground. Don't, don't do it, but as you imagine it, notice what's happening in your body. Notice your response. Is there a little bit of tension in your neck? Where do your eyes go? How are you preparing yourself to fall? What are you noticing, those little preparations in your body? And so without actually falling, but in that first moment of a fall, what are the first few ways that you're gonna protect yourself? What do you feel coming on as you imagine falling? So let that go and come and lie on the floor. And so take time if you want a pillow under your head or a blanket if you're feeling cool. Um, but I will ask you to, to bring your feet so the soles of your feet are on the floor and your knees are pointed towards the ceiling. And just take a few moments, find the right place to put your feet. Where, where does that feel comfortable? And if you don't know, experiment. Just try a little bit closer to your hips a little further away, maybe a little wider or a little closer. Just notice, notice what sets you up to feel comfortable. And then pay attention to your contact with the floor. So as you're laying on your back, do you feel more of a squarish sense, the four corners of you, your hips and your shoulders connecting with the, the floor? Or do you feel a, a, a bit of a rounded feeling, a ballish feeling? Whatever you're feeling, just, just notice your contact. And then wherever your feet are, to just have them far enough apart so that if your knees flop down, you would have space for your knee to travel to the ground. If your knees don't go that far, don't, don't worry about it. But just allow, so rather than having your, your legs fall on each other, so that there's space for them to fall down. And then just let them fall to each side. 
again, just in your range of comfort, what, what, what's possible for you. Your knees don't have to touch the ground. What I'm interested in is the sense of letting your legs go and going with the, the field of gravity. And so just notice, is one side easier than the other? What is the range of motion that feels comfortable? What do you notice happening in the rest of you through your torso? Does your chin move, the back of your head? Now bring your legs up so that you've lifted your feet off the ground. Again, only if this is comfortable for you, um, but having your legs suspended, your knees still pointed to the ceiling, and then rather than holding your legs up, just, just let your shins and your feet dangle, dangle to the ground. If this position isn't comfortable with you, please just stay with your, your soles of your feet on the ground and enough space for your, your knees to fold one way or the other. So from this position, if you do have your legs up in the air, Again, experience the sense of falling to one side. Please do this in a way that your legs are scissoring so you don't have your knees falling on top of each other, but that your bottom leg would be further ahead than your back leg. So basically, so you're, you have space for both knees to travel towards the floor. Again, whether they get there or not is beside the point. And then return your knees up to the ceiling and fall to the other side. So just notice, how is this working for you? Are, do you stay breathing during the process? Are there little moments of bracing, even here? Is there a way for you to allow for an uninterrupted breath so that this is easier, so this flows? one of the critical pieces in changing our reflex is that we don't hold our breath. That's categorically what happens when we brace, is we stop everything just for a moment, stop breathing, stop moving, and we, and we get solid. So just explore this shape of rolling to one side and rolling to the other, and notice your sense of shape. Right now, are you feeling more squarish or more roundish? Just pause. So lie again on your back, your legs bent with your feet in the air, your feet and your shins are dangling. And then rather than falling all the way, I want you to explore this in a specific way. So please pay attention. When you roll to your right side, go just to the point where you feel you'll need to fall to get to the floor, but don't go all the way. So we're exploring here in this movement across your back, the point when you can hold your balance, hold your legs up, and then the point where you would have to let that go. You would have to actually fall to your side. And so just explore that a little on your right side. So lowering your right leg to the right, what does your left leg do? Does it follow along? Is there a point, a kind of point of no return that you roll to the right and then your left leg has to come and all of you falls? So just, just notice where that point is. What is your head doing? Does it make a difference to have your head and your gaze towards the ceiling? How does that affect that, that point of no return when you fall? What difference does it make if you include your head so that as you roll to the right side, your head and your chin and your eyes go with it, go with the movement? Does turning your head lead you to feel more roundish or more squarish? Now, what if you left your left leg quiet so you have your left leg with the knee pointed towards the ceiling, and you do this movement of rolling to the right, but you leave your left knee towards the ceiling, not, not moving much, maybe moving a little. 
And again, does this make a difference? Did your head go back to looking at the ceiling, saying company with your left knee, or, or can you roll it with your right side so that your knee and your head and your chin are all rolling to the right side, to that point of no return? And so just pause again. Can you go to your right side? Lay on your right side with your left knee on top of your right knee. And this time, let's, let's do the reverse. Let's leave your right knee, your right leg in contact with the ground and, and raise your left knee up towards the ceiling in that arc as if it could again be pointed towards the ceiling. Whether you can actually make that range of motion doesn't matter to me at all. We're just exploring the relationship. And notice if going this way, there's, there's a different point. There's a point when, as your left leg comes up towards the ceiling, that your right knee wants to join with it. And again, don't, don't lift your right leg from the ground, but just explore that point. Explore the point when your right leg wants to follow your left leg. And just hang out there with your awareness. What, what, is, what is that like? Where does the pull start? Where do you feel that? Pause again and just come to lie on your back. Lift your bent legs over your head, over, over your body. And from here, roll a little to the right and to the left. So is it possible when you roll right to have your right leg lead and to have your head and your eyes join in that leading so that you're taking more of you to the right and this time go all the way? What's happened to that, that little point of dropping, that point of no return? And then having your left leg lead and having your, your chin and your head and your eyes join lead yourself to roll to the left side. And again, notice, is, is there a, a point of dropping? Or, or is that somehow smoothed out a little? Can you roll a little all the way to the left and smoothly roll all the way to the right without this little point of falling? And so when you're satisfied with exploring this, and you can always pause the recording to have more time. Leave it alone, come to standing, and just notice as you, as you come up to be upright, how far away does the floor feel now? Does it feel friendlier? It might not if you've had a fall recently. This has been a very small uh, exploration. This may be not enough time to reset that sense of friendliness? Do you have a sense of yourself as squarish or roundish? And so in standing, if you have a sense of your shoulders and your hips as four corners, say as if you were a, a card, say a king or queen in the deck, that you could fold your corners in towards each other and feel a little bit more of this, this rounded sense that you can make the square of you a little more rounded. Explore that the other way. What happens when you expand the corners out? This is more like the bracing position where you're rounding back, except we don't bend that way particularly well. So it becomes a tighter, stiffer expansion. So again, notice the rounding by bringing your corners in and the expanding, the more bracing. And so we're wanting to replace the bracing reflex with this rounding, what I call the butt down, and a sense of having a relationship with the floor so that we could round and, and drop down. And so if you're comfortable in doing this, is to, to just from standing, if your knees are up for it, to drop your butt 
to round down, to squat with your head rounded down. And just notice how, how easy is this to do and how, what's your sense of the floor as you, as you squat and drop your butt and drop your head and round down, how does this feel for you? So what's going on with this work? I'm just gonna pause between this expedition and the next expedition. You know, when we brace, we're kind of asking ourselves a question. And that question is, what part of us are we willing to sacrifice to protect ourselves? It's often a wrist or an elbow, some part of our extremities. And so with a rounder shape, this butt back and head down, we're using more of ourselves. Our pelvis can literally kind of drop and roll. And we explored two directions with this. So a side to side, but also in dropping to create more of a ball-like shape. So rather than brace and break, we can drop and roll. So this is an experience of this movement to inform kind of slow movement study. We're doing movement, but we're also moving our awareness. And our brain learns by noticing differences. We notice differences in weight, in light, and in temperature. Um, this, is, this is a form of practical neuroplasticity, using movement to change your brain and your nervous system. It's the way we can build a better reflex. So in this expedition, we briefly explored uh, this butt back, head down, round shape, and started to investigate how to feel a friendlier sense of the floor. In our next expedition, we're going to uh, explore a little bit about losing weight, doing less work, and finding support while moving. So uh, again, I'm going to ask you to have the space with your yoga mat, but we will need a chair uh, for this. So again, if you'd like to pause the recording to get that set up, and then you can start again. So with your space arranged, to come onto your hands and knees, again, if this is comfortable for you, and, and notice you've got four points of support got weight into your hands and weight on your knees. Now unweight one knee, let's say the right knee, and slide it towards the space between your left hand and your left knee. So how does that work? How is that possible? What did you learn from our first learning expedition that would help you with the kind of shape that's needed to start to thread that knee through your, your hand and your, and your opposite knee. So this, this requires some rounding of the spine, doesn't it? Rounding, but also, also a swivel, that if we extended this movement, if it was possible to go all the way, is that we would arrive seated on the left side of our thigh, on our left hip, with our, our sorry, the right side of our thigh and our right hip, with our right knee between our left hand and our left knee. And so if this is comfortable for you to explore, just explore this movement a little bit on one side and then the other side, just to feel a sense of this, this swiveling movement. But then I'll ask you to leave this alone and get yourself situated, sitting on your chair, probably on the, on the front edge, so that you have a sense of having your, your feet very comfortably on the floor. So I wanted to introduce this swiveling movement because our pelvis is a key source of our, our weight in our movement. And so if we attend to the relationship to our pelvis and our head as we move, it helps us to do less work, to feel as if we've lost weight in our movement. This is also helpful to, to interrupt that habit of, of dropping like in a squarish blockish way and to do more of a rolling, more, more of moving like a ball. So rather than bracing and tilting 
and, and kind of, you know, it puts all of our balance eggs into one basket. The pelvis can move more like a pendulum. It can rock, it can roll, and give us more options about how we move ourselves through space. So please come to sit on the edge of your chair. Again, you might want to have your feet a little bit comfortably apart, just so you have room that you could um, have one knee come down and have room to go all the way to the floor very similar to what we did in the first learning expedition. And so just notice where is the weight? Do you feel weight equally under both feet, mostly through your left foot, mostly through your right foot? How about under your pelvis on the left side or the right side? And if you, you turned as if someone was calling you from behind and you swiveled in your chair, which way would you go? How does that change the weight in your feet and in your pelvis to turn and look about you? Try both ways. Which one is easier? Which one do you prefer? So start with the sense that you're going to swivel in the direction that felt easiest to you. But this time, as you swivel, the knee that goes forward. So for example, if I'm swiveling a little to the left, my right knee is going to go forward. And if I swivel to the right, my left knee will go forward. So I'm swiveling to the left, having my right knee go forward, and then seeing, can I drop that right knee towards the direction of the ground? And so explore this movement, like let it develop. Let go of the goal of having to get your knee all the way down. It, it robs us of really feeling how it is we organize ourselves to do this. You may be in a chair that's, that's a little tall for you. And so if you need to, you can bring a pillow or a folded towel and raise the floor a bit so that you could explore this, this movement of swiveling, and dropping your knee until you get to the point where you can actually place your knee on the ground or on the pillow below you. And so work with this movement and explore how that's possible. So you're working with points of support. So if I'm swiveling left, I've got the support of my left leg, my left sit bone, left side of my pelvis, my right, and then I'm moving and dropping my right knee down and continuing to have the support of my right toe. Feel free to grab the back of your chair with your, your hand or with both hands if that helps, helps you do this movement. What I don't want you to do is just to drop onto your knee. See if you can work with finding the support while you're moving until your right knee is placed on the floor. And once you've gotten there, then to continue to go downwards, but again, relying on your hands coming for support. And so you'll notice that if you're coming, coming forward, dropping your right knee, that you could come to have both hands on the floor, your left foot and your right knee. So we're almost at the place we were at the beginning of this expedition on two knees and two hands. How do you get back up? Let's try two experiments. So from having your weight on your hands and your foot and one knee, try lifting your head from here. How much work was that? How, how heavy a push is that? Is that even possible if you have knee or leg issues? Co coming back to that position, so having your hands on the floor, one leg up and one knee down. This time, leave your head down and lift your pelvis up. Lift it up until you can place it on, on your chair and then lift your head. How was that? Was that easier or harder? It's certainly less familiar. We're used to moving and bringing our head upright as quickly as possible. This is a good example of counterbalance. 
leaving the weight of the head lower and lifting the pelvis higher so we can more easily bring the weight of the torso and the head upright. Let's, let's go back to exploring swiveling so we could see how we might get all the way to the ground. So again, sit on the edge of your chair, bring your right knee or your left knee forward and down, whichever, whichever direction you were working with in your preference. Bring yourself down so you can stand on your knee. Shift to having your weight into your hands on the ground, but then keep swiveling your, your pelvis down and you may find that you're sitting cross-legged, more or less facing your chair. We can explore this movement by what each limb is doing, what each foot, what each hand is doing. But what's interesting is to explore in, in lifting this is, is just to reverse the movement. So your front leg, if you're sitting cross-legged, is that you can rock on your pelvis to one side until that foot has the bottom of your foot standing on the ground. And what does this remind you of? We're close to, we can bring our hands to hold the ground in front of that standing leg, come up onto a knee, and then we can raise our pelvis and come back onto our seat. So explore this, this process, this is one way to get to the floor that we can swivel on our seat, drop our knee, come down onto our hands, so one knee and one foot, and then continue the swivel so that we're seated on our, on our back or seated on our butt and we have our legs crossed. To reverse it, bringing the, the front leg so that we're rocking to that side, placing the foot on the ground, bringing our hands as support. So we have our hands, a standing leg, and then kneeling on the other knee, the knee that's farthest from your chair, lifting your pelvis, and then raising your head at the end to come up. So we could treat this as a movement for performance. This is a way to get up and off of the ground, to get down to the ground and up. And it works that way. But what's more interesting is the relationship of the counterbalance, how we can use that to create a feeling of less work and to follow the flow, the movement of our pelvis in, this, in the swiveling spiral to go up and to go down. And so these are two learning expeditions to point out ways we can use ourselves to do the work of bringing our, our weight from upstanding to down to the ground in a light manner. And so just to uh, demonstrate a little bit of what that movement can look like put all together, I've got some Aikido mats here. And so from standing, we, you were sitting and doing this swiveling movement, well, I can do that from falling. So there is an element of butt back and head down, but I can add a swivel to that so that I can come down and come lightly to the ground and then reverse it. So we'll do that a couple times. I've tripped, I'm falling, butt back, head down, swivel, and lightly to the ground. And then we can reverse it to come back. So because I've got soft mats here, it's easy for me to demonstrate. Feel free to explore that for yourself. But just to sum up, the, you know, in order to reset our reflexes, you know, drawing on butt back, head down, butt back, creating a round shape, letting our pelvis roll, you know, have a ball. Sensing the floor as part of your space, finding your counterbalance for your weight, and then following the points of support you have with three points of contact, you can find the way to fall lightly. Thanks for joining me. It was a pleasure to support the Edmonton Resilience Festival 
and their their way to adapt to the digital environment uh, given given our circumstances. I hope you all stay safe, stay well, and take care. <laughs>